Hi, I'm Dr. Oluso Jadomi, and I welcome you to this course. Before we begin, I'd like to highlight exactly what I want you to take away from this presentation. Um, by the end of this study session, you should be able to define and use correctly basic key terms and concepts. You should be able to describe the relationship between genes and heredity. You should be able to list and explain the various branches of genetics and you should be able to state why the study of our genes have become so important to us. Now, I'll begin this course with the question, what is genetics? Genetics is defined as a study of heredity and variations of organisms. Heredity, on the other hand, is the process in which a parent passes certain genes onto their children. What does this mean? It means offsprings now inherit their biological parents' genes that express such specific traits, such as some physical characteristics, natural talents, and genetic disorders. Now, heredity describes how some traits are passed from parents to offsprings, and the traits are trans expressed by genes, which are small sections of DNA that code for specific traits. Now, Genetics can traditionally be subdivided into four divisions, and this will be discussed here. The four major branches of genetics are classical genetics, molecular genetics, population genetics, and quantitative genetics. All genetics before the 1970s are classical genetics, which is mainly based on observing phenotype inheritance. It describes how traits are passed from generation to generation. Molecular genetics studies the structure and functions of genes at a molecular level. Population genetics, on the other hand, tries to answer questions about gene behavior at population and evolutionary level. Quantitative genetics, however, is a study of the inheritance of traits that show a continuous distribution of phenotypes in a segregated population. Now, traits that are controlled by many genes also exhibit quantitative inheritance as each gene separates in a Mendelian fashion. Now, um, three major events in the mid-1800s led directly to the development of modern genetics, and these were in 1959, 1866, and 1871. Now, in 1859, Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species, which described the theory of evolution by natural selection. The theory requires heredity to work, however, in 1866, Gregor Mendel publishes, uh, published rather, experiments in plant hybridization, which lays out the basic theory of genetics. It is widely ignored until 1900. While in 1871, uh, Friedrich isolates nucleic acid from pus um, cells. Now, there are other major events in the 20th century. For instance, in the 1900. There was a rediscovery of Mendel's work by Robert Cohens, Hugo de Vries, and Eric von Chemak. In 1902, Archibald Garrow discovers that um, Alcatonuria, which is a human disease, has a genetic basis. In 1904, Gregory Bateson discovers linkage between genes and also coins the word genetics. He coined out the word genetics. And in 1900, Thomas Hunt Morgan proves that genes are located on chromosomes using Drosophila. In 1918, Fisher begins the study of quantitative genetics by partitioning, by partitioning phenotypic variants into a genetic and environmental component. While in 1926, Muller shows that X rays induce mutations. In 1944, um, Oswald Havry. MacLeod and McCarthy show that DNA can transform bacteria, demonstrating that DNA is the hereditary material. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick determine the structure of the DNA molecule, which leads directly to the knowledge of how it replicates. In 1966, Marshall solves the genetic code, showing that the three, the, showing that three DNA code basis codes for one amino acid. In 1972, Stanley and Boyer combined DNA from two different species in vitro and then transformed 
them to bacterial cells. And um, in the 2011, there was a sequence of the entire human genome that was introduced. Now we're going to look at um, basic genetic concepts and terms. And um, this takes us to understanding the different concepts and terms that are that, that you find in um, genetics. Now the first one is the genome, and genomes are a collection of genetic information. All right. Now the chromosome itself um, is a storage unit of genes. But however, if we look at the genome, you will see, find, you come to discover that a genome is a full set of genetic information that an organism carries in its DNA. Now, the study of any genome starts with the analysis of chromosomes. Now, chromosomes are bundles of DNA and protein found in the nucleic of eukaryotic cells. Now, we will need to look at what chromosomes are actually. Now, chromosomes are very long DNA and associated proteins that carry portions of the energy information of an organism. They are actually composed of DNA and protein that are located within the nucleus of our cells. Now, chromosomes determine everything from air, color, and eye color to sex. Now, that brings us to DNA, and DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, DNA stores genetic information in the nucleus. DNA actually is the genetic blueprint or the recipe for making all living things. Almost every cell in your body contains DNA and you have 5 trillion cells in your body. All right. Now, the alleles are alternative forms of a gene that is located at a specific position on a specific chromosome. Now, organisms have two alleles for each trait. Now, what is a gene? A gene is the basic unit of heredity in living organisms. Now, genes hold information to build and maintain cells and pass genetic traits to offsprings. Genes actually are sections of or segments of DNA that are carried on chromosomes and determine specific human characteristics. Now, we will need to make a clarification between what a dominant and recessive alleles, what, what, they, what they are. Now, a dominant allele is one whose trait always shows up in the organisms when the allele is present. Now, while a recessive allele is maxed or covered up whenever the dominant allele is present. Now, a trait controlled by a recessive allele will only show up in the organisms um, that inherits two recessive alleles for the trait. Now, also, you could say that a dominant allele is expressed when it is paired with a recessive allele. Now, while a recessive allele is only visible when paired with another recessive allele. Now, what is the difference between homozygous and heterozygous organisms? Now, a homozygous trait, rather, is made up of two of the same allele, while a heterozygous trait is made up of two different alleles. And this brings us to um, a distinction between genotype and phenotype. Now, a genotype is an organism's uh, individual's collection of genes. The term also can refer to two alleles inherited for a particular gene. Now, the genotype is expressed when the information encoded in the genes DNA is used to make proteins and RNA molecules. Now, the expression of the genotype contributes to the individual's observable traits, which is called phenotype. Now, with this, um, having gone through this study session, you will come to understand that gene study can be seen to be important in our everyday life. In future, doctors and scientists hope to use our genetic information to diagnose, treat, prevent, and cure many illnesses. Genes are our instructions which tell your body how to make all the proteins it needs to survive and grow. By identifying each of these proteins, scientists hope to better understand how the body works and what's happening when it doesn't work properly. They hope this knowledge will eventually lead to more effective medicines and treatments. Now, in these study sessions, you have learned 
the definition of genetics along with some keywords. You have also learned the history of genetics as well as the relevance of genes to life. Thank you.